Hello, welcome to our presentation. Sorry, uh, I'm a bit late. Uh, there were some technical issues regarding the, the presentation. So I'm Nolan Chan, and uh, I will present Calio Multiwave today. Uh, I will start with a, a few uh, words about the company. Uh, before I do so, uh, please note that, of course, you can use the chat if you have any questions. Uh, you can ask it, of course, now, or you can ask it uh, later on by email, uh, as I wrote in the chat. So a few words about the company. So uh, I'll be presenting a system from uh, Phasix today. So Phasix is a French company that was created in 2003. Uh, our core expertise uh, is uh, basically providing, uh, building, and developing uh, high resolution wavefront uh, measurement solutions from 190 nanometers to 14 microns. Uh, these solutions means that we can provide uh, different levels of integration from the single uh, sensor, so the standalone wavefront sensor solution with this software, as you can see here on three uh, examples. So the SID4GE here, the SID4SC8, or the SID4UV. Uh, these solutions can be coupled with also uh, another a layer of um, solution that we also provide. Uh, and an example of that is uh, the R cube that we have here. Uh, the R-Cube is an illumination module, so it serves as a high-quality collimated uh, source. Uh, it can be uh, coupled with a telescope system that we can provide uh, objectives to create a point source solutions, or oh, point source, sorry, uh, that we can also provide, and uh, actually a lot of different accessories. Uh, we also provide more complete solutions, uh, so there are two examples of them. Uh, one is Calio Multiwave that I will present today, and another one is Calio MTF, which is uh, an automated um, small lens with large field of view testing machine in order to get basically all the different parameters that you might require, so EFL, so geometric parameters like EFL, uh, CRA, etc., but also, of course, wavefront-related information like OPD, uh, Zanicki aberrations, etc. We also provide custom solutions that, for example, you can see here, uh, this is basically an interferometer that works at two wavelengths at the same time, one in the SWIR, so short wave infrared, around 1,500 nanometers, and another one around 2.3 microns. Um, so our solutions are really uh, quite uh, diverse and versatile, and we have solutions from the deep UV to the, the far infrared. All of our products that you can see here, or even all of the products we developed since 2003, uh, are based on one technology uh, that is called quadri-wave lateral sharing interferometry. So to take a look uh, to also where our solutions are, are used, um, we can take a look at this map. So we are based in uh, France, actually in the south of Paris, in saint aubin We have a sales office uh, that is in the US, and we work uh, in Asia or in Eastern Europe and in the UK with different uh, distributors. Uh, regarding our uh, customers, we have the customers on all the, the, the three continents and also in Australia. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, all of our products are based on one technology that is called Quadri Wave Lateral Sharing Interferometry or QWLSI. So, how it works is um, really to the core of the technology is inside uh, our wavefront sensor, and we build solutions around that. Um, so the wavefront sensor itself is based on two main components. One is a diffractive grading that we call modified Harman mask, and another one is a sensor from different technology, microbolometers, uh, CMOS, CCD, or uh, in-gas, etc., to adapt to basically the wavelengths of the beam you want to analyze. So you, when you send um, basically the beam uh, that you want to get the wavefront from, it will and go inside the wavefront sensor, of course. It will first go through the modified Hyman mask, in which it will diffract into four replicas, which corresponds to the uh, first orders of diffraction, so plus and minus one order in x-axis and plus and y minus one order in y-axis. These four uh, replicas or small beams will arrive on the sensor where they will interfere. So this is typically what you get here is the interference pattern that corresponds to the raw image you get on the camera. And what we analyze on that is uh, really the frequency oscillations of the signal that you get. So if you look at the interference between four uh, beams, you get typically this 2D sine function pattern and its frequency of oscillation will modify. And what is shown 
um, in uh, basically the scientific publication linked to our technology is that this frequency of oscillation uh, is linked to uh, the phase gradient. And from the phase gradient, you get uh, the phase information. So there are three main advantages of using this technology. The first one is the high uh, resolution compared to other wavefront sensor technologies, because we only need three or four detector pixels to get one phase pixel. So if we get orders of magnitude, for example, uh, with a 15 millimeter pupil, you can typically get up to 800 times 700 uh, phase measurement points. And we also have a large dynamic range that enables to measure, of course, large uh, aberrations but also to work directly with diverging beams as well, so with high NA um, optics or high NA beams. Uh, and the last one, the one that I will develop more, is the achromaticity. The sensor itself can function and provide the same result independently of the, of the wavelengths. So this is basically the, the root uh, that, uh, the root reason or the main reason why we can provide a system that is cardio multiwave, which is a physio-like interferometer, a physio-like system that can work at different wavelengths inside the same box, uh, typically. So the main advantage of that is that depending on the solution that you want to characterize, you can adjust the wavelengths and really characterize the system in its final use configuration. So it's with its uh, working wavelengths. So we can provide uh, different uh, measurements. So how it works is, um, in a double pass configuration. So for example, here uh, you would work with a reference mirror to really take as a reference all the pos potential aberrations coming from the, from the optical path. And from that, uh, you can use, of course, the different wavelengths and you can then either uh, replace the reference mirror by a sample, so by another a flat mirror uh, to make a characterization or a reflection, reflective system, or you can add a sample and characterize it in transmission in double pass. This is why here you can get typically the transmitted wave from there as well as the reflective wave from there. So we work at different wavelengths, but we also work at different ranges. So it means that we can work in the UV, in the visible, in the NIR, in the sphere, and also in a farther infrared uh, wavelengths. In terms of use, it is quite comparable to a FISO interferometer, and you will find uh, typically the same kind of alignment systems like um, a far field uh, camera to basically uh, align uh, easily the tilt of uh, your components. So to give a couple examples, so the first uh, example that we can think of is basically, we say that it's an achromatic measurement, um, but what is it really uh, achromatic? So there, the thing, the measurement that we made is typically testing um, a mirror with a, a metallic coating at different wavelengths. So you can see here at 625, 700, 780, and 1050 nanometers and make the same measurement and compare the results with the same procedure. And you see that actually in terms of surface from there, so SFE, we get typically something that is in the range of less than three nanometer RMS difference between the different measurements. And then uh, another also application that is quite specific to Kaleo Multiwave, as I mentioned, is you can really work at the wavelength that corresponds to your optics. So it means that, for example, you could work with a specific filter at a specific wavelength and characterize it. So this is why also Calio Multiwave as a standard solution is the only of the shelf solution actually at 780 nanometer. For example, it could be 800, 900, three depends on the optics you want to characterize. So this is more like a repeatability information. We also made a direct comparison with FISO on a reference system. So with uh, typically around 2.7 microns of astigmatism. Uh, so we made basically five measurements using calorimeter and five measurements using a FISO interferometer and made the comparison at the end. And you find that actually uh, you have actually less dispersion if you look really at a measurement to measurement difference. But also in the end, when you look at the average, you have a really a difference that is quite a small. And the, the results are really less than four nanometer PV different. So in the end, uh, this was just a quick uh, presentation about our solution and basically what we can achieve. So we can really measure uh, transmitted wavefront air, reflected wavefront air, MTF, PSF, on and off axis quite easily because how it works is really uh, like a FISO interferometer, so really comparable to what uh, you might be uh, used to using. Uh, we can really work in a lot of different configurations, so point to point, infinite to finite, and also, uh, it is quite versatile uh, in terms of wavelengths or in terms of projects where you might need to change um, 
to change the wavelength depending on the system that you're building or prototyping. And finally, so more on a global scale about what we do at Phasix, we can provide different solutions. So standalone wavefront sensors, uh, intermediate accessories to provide the source to uh, shape the beam to your sample, and also uh, more complete solution like turnkey solutions. So that's the end for today. Uh, if you have any uh, question, of course, uh, I check that in the uh, chat. And uh, otherwise, if you think of something later on, uh, don't hesitate to send it by email to me.